Hi, my name is Zach, and here on Bite Size Engineering, I make ridiculous project videos to get you excited about making things and unleashing your inner maker. I've spent the last couple weeks learning how to make PCB art, and in this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is. I've been designing PCBs professionally and as a hobbyist for over 10 years. But up until recently, every single PCB that I designed was just purely for function. There was no form to it. I was always hesitant to dive into this because I always thought that it was just too difficult and that it would be really time consuming to get something that looks good. I was surprised to learn just how simple this actually is. I even made a video a long time ago about the process of creating a schematic and then doing a board layout to create a PCB. This video is going to be totally different because the PCBs I'm making have no electronics on them. PCBs are made out of different layers of materials. The base is made out of fiberglass with thin layers of copper on each side. The manufacturer will etch away all of the copper that's not needed for the circuit board design. This leaves bare copper and fiberglass exposed, so to cover that up, they'll use something called a solder mask. The solder mask is what usually gives PCBs their green color. But as I'll show you a little later on in the video, you don't have to choose green as your solder mask color. These circuit boards will usually have a white ink called silk screen applied to the board. The silk screen layer is usually used to identify the components on the board. It can also be used to print the name of the circuit board or the name of the company or even the logo. If you were to leave the bare copper pads exposed to the air and moisture, they would oxidize, which would make it really difficult to solder components to the board. To get around this problem, the manufacturer will apply a surface finish to those copper pads. There are usually two options. There is HASL, which is sort of the cheaper default option. All they do is they take melted solder and they apply a thin layer to those copper pads. The more expensive and usually better quality option is called ENIG, which is a really thin gold layer applied to those copper pads. Both of these options prevent all of that oxidation from happening on the copper pads. They also make those copper pads very shiny. So we're gonna take advantage of all these different manufacturing layers and the colors that result from stacking them on one another to create some artwork out of a PCB. To make PCB art, we're obviously gonna need some PCB design software. And in this video, I'm gonna be using an open source option called KiCad. The reason I like KiCad is because it has built-in tools to convert bitmap images into PCB layers. And obviously that functionality is sort of the foundation of what we're trying to do. If you're gonna follow along with me here in the video, go ahead and download the latest version of KiCad. I'm gonna start with a simple image and show you how to convert it into PCB art. Later on, I'll show you how to take more complex images and shapes and turn them into PCB art. The first step is to choose the image you're going to convert into a PCB. I would recommend starting with a profile picture or something similar to that. I'm gonna create a folder here on my desktop and drop that photo into the folder. If your photo doesn't have a white background, you can use a tool like Photoshop or some online converter to remove the background and replace it with white. The most important thing that you wanna do is to make sure the photo or image that you're gonna use is very high contrast. You want an image that has lots of highlights and lots of shadows and everything in between. If your image is sort of dull and doesn't have much contrast to it, this whole process is not gonna work. Once you have your image selected, you're gonna open up KiCad and use the bitmap, what is it called? Open up the image converter tool in KiCad. And on the right hand side, you'll click load bitmap and navigate to the folder where you saved your picture. After you load your picture into the image converter, you want to change the size of your image to the size of the PCB that you want to make. I know that I want to make a little circular token that's about 40 millimeters in diameter. I actually found it best to size your image a couple of millimeters larger than your end result so that the edges of your image don't show up on your PCB. So if I know my PCB is going to be 40 millimeters in diameter, I'm going to change the dimensions of my photo to 42 millimeters. Now that the image is resized properly, it's time to start converting our layers. In the upper left hand corner, you'll see an original picture tab, a grayscale picture tab, and a black and white picture tab. We're mostly gonna be working with the black and white picture tab. And now I can go over to my image options and there's a black and white threshold slider. You can play around with that slider and slide the value from zero to 100 and see how that affects your image. There's more than one way to go about doing this, but I found the process that I'm about to show you is probably the simplest way to do it. The first thing you need to do is to check the negative box. We're gonna be working with a negative version of this image. The first layer that I wanna create is the darkest part of the image. This is the shadows and all of the darkest parts of the image. This is often easier to see if you go back to the original picture tab. My profile picture is in color, so I can see that the left-hand side of my face is sort of darker, it's in shadow, and then the light gets a little bit lighter as you cross the right side of my face. My whole goal is to isolate those darkest parts of the image. And to do that, I've got the negative option checked 
and I'm in the black and white picture tab and I'm gonna start the threshold at 100 and you can see that the entire image is now black. So I'm gonna slide that image and reduce that threshold until I start seeing the darkest parts of the image turn white. In profile pictures, I found it especially necessary to make sure you get the details of the eyes in this first step. If you don't get the details of your eyes in this first pass, the image ends up looking kind of weird and kind of ghostly. There's no magic value for that threshold number because every image is different. Like I said, the goal of this step is to isolate those darkest parts of the image. This might be a good time to stop and talk about how we want to use the different layers of the PCB to capture the details of our images. One way to think about this is that we have a palette of four colors that we can use based on the layers of the PCB. If you wanted to get a little more fancy with how you stack the layers, you could get a couple of more colors out of this, but we're gonna to stick to a four color palette. Four different colors going from lightest to darkest are the silk screen, the exposed copper, the masked copper, and then the masked fiberglass. So our goal with isolating the darkest parts of our image is to figure out what we want that masked fiberglass and the masked copper to be. Remember that this is a negative image. So as we slide the slider from 100 down through the 90s and 80s, we're gonna start revealing the darkest parts of our image. As we slide that threshold down, the pixels that are black are going to be our darkest. They're going to be the masked fiberglass. Then the pixels that are in white are going to be the masked copper. Those are gonna be just slightly lighter color than the masked fiberglass. Once you've selected the right threshold value for your image, you're gonna look at the output format and make sure that footprint PCAD mod file is selected. Then you're gonna go down to the board layer for outline and select front silk screen. The layer that we're working on now is actually our front copper layer. Unfortunately, KeyCAD doesn't have an option for front copper, so we're gonna select front silk screen and then export to file. I'm gonna to navigate to that folder that I created and name this file Zach Hips f.cu, that stands for front copper. So that's pretty much it for creating the front copper layer on our board. Now we can move on to creating the solder mask layer. This is going to translate to the exposed tin copper on the PCB. So I'm gonna isolate the light on one side of my face versus the shadow on the other half of my face. Similar to the last layer, we're gonna be focusing on the black pixels. The black pixels that you select in this image are going to translate to the exposed tin copper in our PCB. I'm happy with the threshold value that I have, so I'm ready to export this layer. I'm going to go down to the board layer for outline, and instead of front silk screen, now I'm going to check front solder mask, and then I'll export to file. And then I'll name this file f.mask. So at this point, we've created two out of the three layers that we need. Now it's time to move on to the brightest highlights of our image. On our PCB, this is going to be represented by the silk screen layer. And just like the last two layers, we're gonna focus again on the black pixels on this image because those are gonna be translated to the white silk screen on our PCB. The PCBs really turn out best when you use that silk screen layer to capture just the highlights or the shiniest parts of the image. You don't wanna overdo it. So this is perfect for capturing the details of our teeth or the shiniest parts of our cheeks. I promise you it will look weird if you put too much silk screen on there. Once I'm happy with the threshold value, I'm gonna to go to the board layer for outline and then check front silk screen. Then I'm gonna click export to file. And I'll go ahead and I'll name this Zach Hips F.SilkS. All of the information we need for our four colors in our color palette is contained in those three files. I know, I said four colors and only three files. That's because the first file we created contains the information for the darkest color and the second to darkest color. Now it's time to create the actual circuit board with the layer information we just extracted from the image. But before we can do that, there's a little bit of cleanup we have to do on those files that we just created. I'm gonna leave the image converter tool open because I know I'm gonna to wanna to make adjustments and I don't wanna to have to start over. Luckily, the files that we just created are just plain text files. I like to use Notepad++ for my text editor, so I'm just gonna drag and drop those three files that we just created in Notepad++. All this text file is doing is describing the polygons needed to create our image. The first little bit of cleanup that we have to do on these files is to remove the section about the reference indicator and the logo. So make sure you get the start and close of both of those parentheses and delete them. We could hide them later on, but I find it easier just to delete that part out of the text file and then we don't have to worry about it. Be sure not to delete any of the polygon information or the header at the top of the file. We need to delete both of those elements in all three of the files we created, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And of course, I'm saving the files after I've modified them. 
the last little bit of cleanup I need to do is to open up the front copper file. Do you remember how earlier I said that KeyCAD doesn't have an option to export the information for front copper? So I'm gonna do a search for F.SilkS. This is the front silk screen, and I'm gonna replace it with F.CU, which is front copper. Once you've replaced all of the instances of F.SilkS with F.CU, you can save the file and we're done modifying them. Now we're gonna head back into KeyCAD and create a new project from the file menu. I'll navigate to the folder that we've been using the whole time and name it Zach Hips. Now I can click on PCB Editor and that will create a new PCB file. Before I place any of those layer files, I need to tell KeyCAD where to go look for them. So I'm gonna click on Preferences and then Manage Footprint Libraries. Then I'll click on Project Specific Libraries. Then I'll click on the folder icon which will add a path to our project directory. I have a little trick that will make our lives easier in the next step. Under the nickname, I'm going to edit that and do a one underscore. And that's just gonna put it at the top of the list and make it super easy to find. Otherwise, you might be scrolling through a whole bunch of libraries to find the one that you just created. I'll click OK and we're ready to open up the PCB editor. For this particular PCB, like I said earlier, I'm going to do a circular token. So the first step I wanna do is to create the board outline. That's gonna tell KeyCAD what the outline shape of our PCB is gonna be. So I'm going to draw a circle. Before I draw the circle, I'll make sure that I select edge cuts as my layer. I like to change the grid to something coarse like five millimeters by five millimeters. And then I'm gonna draw the center of my circle at some known coordinate. For example, I'll use X50, Y50. In KeyCAD, anytime you need to edit something, you move your cursor over one of the anchor points and you hit the letter E for edit, and that will bring up any properties that that element has. So in this case, I can see that I've centered the circle at 50 millimeters X and 50 millimeters Y, and I want the diameter of my circle to be 40, so I've set my radius to 20 millimeters. At this point, I can hit OK, and that's gonna be the outline of my board. So any of the other layers that I place from now on should be centered on that circle. So now it's time to bring in and place the footprints for those three layers that we created earlier. I'm gonna click on Add Footprint, and now I can see the library I just made a minute ago at the top of my list. The reason it's at the top is because we changed the nickname to start with one underscore, just to put it at the top of the list. So if we drop down into that library, I can see the three different footprints that we created. I'm gonna start with the front copper layer, and I click on that and click OK, Here's one of the coolest things about using KeyCAD for this project. There's a 3D viewer that you can use to visualize what your PCB is gonna look like. So to see the three-dimensional view, you go up to the top and click View and 3D Viewer. You could also use the keyboard shortcut. So here's our first glimpse of what just one layer looks like. It's kind of the darkest parts of the image and then the second darkest parts of the image. And that's why I was talking about capturing the details in the eyes. Make sure that you definitely get this right, otherwise your image isn't gonna turn out right. So that's looking pretty good. Let's add the solder mask layer next. So I'm gonna go again to place footprint, and then I'm gonna click on F mask, okay. And I wanna make sure that I center it in the same spot. And again, I can go to the 3D viewer and see what that change looks like. So that's a lot more detail. It's, it's kind of fun to see how the different layers combine together to create all that detail. So the last thing we need to do is add that silk screen layer and see how that looks. So I go back into the PCB editor, do add footprint, and then do the front silk screen and center it, make sure it's all centered. And then I click on my 3D viewer, let it update, and there you go. There's the highlights of the image. You can see it's just my teeth and sort of the shiniest parts of my cheek. After you've made all the adjustments you're gonna make, it's time to export the Gerber files. Go to the menu and click plot and then you're going to export them as Gerbers. Then you just export the front copper, the front silk screen, the front mask, and then of course your edge cuts for your outline of the board. These will be in a Gerber format, which every board manufacturer accepts. At this point, it was time to try something that was a little bit more complex. I wanted to make a PCB that looked like a non-copyright infringing spaceship. To create the board outline, I brought the image into Adobe Illustrator and I did an image trace using the silhouette setting. 
That gave me the outline of the board, which I could then export as a DXF. I showed you how to use the drawing tools in KiCad to create the board outline, but if you need a more complex board outline, there's a tool that allows you to import a DXF file for the board outline. Once I exported the outline DXF file from Adobe Illustrator, I could import that into KiCad and use that as the edge cut outline. One thing to keep in mind when you have a complex outline like this is the minimum radius that they can cut. They're not gonna be able to cut out really narrow or small features. So just keep that in mind when you're designing the shape. Now that I'm done designing these boards and I have the Gerber files ready, I can send them off to a manufacturer to have them made. I uploaded my designs to the board manufacturer last night and I went to bed. When I woke up this morning, I got a few interesting emails. The first email was kind of a warning that the PCB art that I submitted may not turn out as well as I hoped and that they wanted to just let me know before they continue with producing the boards. They gave me a couple of options. I can either cancel the order entirely or I can move ahead with production, but I'm not allowed to submit a quality complaint after I get the boards. I totally get where they're coming from. They're just trying to cover their bases and let me know that these boards may not turn out as well as I like. After a couple of questions back and forth with the manufacturer, I decided to move forward with producing these boards. One of the other warning emails that I got was that they'll be printing silkscreen directly on top of tin copper. That's not something you normally do on a PCB design, and so I told them that that was okay and that was intentional and to move forward. The last warning that they gave was a problem I saw in advance, but I didn't care enough to try to fix the problem, but of course it came back to bite me in the butt. One of the little cutouts on the outline of the board was just too small. It was not something that they're able to manufacture. So I have to modify the outline of the board and make sure that the radius is, is something that they can actually cut out and manufacture. So I'm gonna go ahead and fix that and resubmit that file to the manufacturer. The board's just arrived and I'm ready to get my first look at these PCBs. This board turned out pretty good, but there's actually something wrong with it. So if you look closely, they actually didn't put any silk screen on this entire board, which is a bummer. So the manufacturing company was trying to kind of cover their bases and do a sanity check, and they didn't put silk screen on top of here, even though I wanted them to. If you want to avoid the headache of not having that silk screen layer on there, I would recommend adding a note on the silk screen layer to let them know that it's intentional that it's being placed on top of that tin copper. Most PCB design environments allow you to put notes in there. Remember that these boards are two layers so you can have a whole different design on the back side here. I decided to do my logo in the masked copper layer, which is a little more subtle than doing it on the silk screen. These are cool just the way they are, but I thought it would be fun to add some more functionality, so I put a little hole in there designed to accept a little keychain ring. You could put these little PCBs on your backpack or your luggage, or even carry them around on your keychain. If you're interested in learning more about how to design a more traditional PCB with working components, go check out that video I mentioned earlier. There's a lot of good information about how to get started designing your own PCB.